Hello, my name is John Reed, and today we're going to talk about deepwater coral reefs of the Gulf of Mexico. In order to study a deepwater coral reef, it's helpful to be able to see what's on bottom by using submersibles, such as the Johnson Ceiling Submersible that we've used to study the deepwater reefs in the Gulf of Mexico since the early 1980s. We can also use ROVs or remotely operated vehicles, but these are more problematic because they have an umbilical cord that stretches from the ship to the bottom and are difficult to work in where we have strong bottom currents. It's helpful when we have a map of the bottom, such as this uh, multi-beam sonar map on the left, but this just shows the topography of the bottom. It doesn't show what's living there. On the upper right is a side scan sonar of the same reef, again showing the topography, but does not show if there's reef, live coral, or dead coral. And we have that overlaid with dots where the submersible dive went during a ground truth of the reef site. And now we see that the bottom is covered with living coral. Deepwater coral reefs off the eastern and southern coast of the United States are extensive, ranging from North Carolina down through the southeastern United States and up into the Gulf of Mexico off of Florida, uh, Viasca Knoll, which is very extensive, very near the oil spill site of this summer, and over to Green Canyon off Louisiana. The little red dot shows all of the deepwater discoveries that we have made just in the last 10 years. These are over 400 deepwater coral reefs myself and colleagues have discovered primarily off the eastern U.S., but also up into the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Most of these reefs are made by a species of coral called Lophelia pertusa. These grow as deep as 2,000 meters worldwide, but mostly they form extensive deepwater coral reefs at depths of 400 to 800 meters. It is thought that the larvae of these deepwater corals settle on a rock or even a coral debris and grow up and over tens of thousands of years, even hundreds of thousands of years, they finally form these massive structures which are up to 100 or 200 meters tall. This is one such reef. And these reefs are just extensive bushes, these coral, Lophelia coral, but like a shallow water reef, they have other species such as gorgonians or sea fans, sea anemones, and many sponges. This sponge here, we're working on in our biomedical research division for a new discovery where we've discovered a new compound that in the laboratory treats and kills human pancreatic cancer. Other species that are used for commercial purposes, fishing for uh, sharks and grouper, fishing for golden crab, and also royal red shrimp. The human impacts on these deepwater reefs worldwide are extensive, from fishing pressure, bottom trawls for shrimp and fish, for long lines for fish and also the golden crab, as well as energy production and oil production. Now this summer, we had an interesting experience where we were able to go to the Gulf of Mexico to see if these deep water reefs were impacted by this terrible oil event. Here we see the loop current, which typically is in the Gulf of Mexico. If that loop current would have occurred this summer, that oil from the oil rig explosion would have immediately gone through the Straits of Florida on the shallow water Florida Keys and up the east coast of Florida. Luckily, this did not happen. Here is Florida, and the loop current this year stayed very low. It did not loop up. Instead, there was a spin-off eddy, which kept most of the oil near the top, unfortunately for Louisiana and Mississippi, but lucky for Florida. But some of this oil came down the west coast of Florida, and that's what we wanted to see if the oil in the midwater levels was impacting these deep water reefs. So these sites is where we studied the summer with the Johnson Ceiling Submersible, and we were funded by NOAA, the Cooperative Institute for Research. Well, during that 
uh, research, luckily we found no oil on those deep water reefs off the west coast of Florida. However, during the cruise, we discovered a new deep water coral reef, a Lophelia coral reef that was unknown previous to this summer's dive. Here it is at about 500 meters depth. That's a fathometer profile of the reef. Well, here's a videotape of the new discovery we made this summer of a deep water coral reef in 1,500 feet of water, about 100 miles southwest of Naples, Florida. Here we're coming up the, the uh, slope of the reef, and you can just see these large thickets of coral. These thickets are three to five feet tall, but I've seen some coral thickets as large as 10 feet tall. Here we're zoomed in on the coral, and you can see how fragile it is. The diameter of these coral branches is about the diameter of a pencil. They're very slow growing, less than one half inch a year. So a large colony, a colony that's maybe one or two meters in diameter, could easily be centuries old. These corals provide an incredible habitat to over 2,000 species of small crabs and shrimp and worms and fish. This is called a galatheid or squat crab, but very dominant living on the coral and kind of filter feeding among the branches as plankton floats by. This is a type of fish that's related to orange roughy. And here's that sponge that I mentioned that could be a cure for pancreatic cancer called Afrocalistes. Many other species live on these reefs, just like a shallow water reef. So this is the worry. If oil gets in the surface water in the plankton on the surface and rains down on these deep water reefs, what would happen to these reefs? And I especially want to thank the crew of the ship and the Johnson Sea Link submersible. Without that crew and the submersible itself, these discoveries for the past 35 years would not have been made. My recommendations for these deep water reefs and deep water reefs worldwide is to make them or give them designation as a marine protected area to protect against potential damage from bottom fishing and energy development. These reefs are millions of years old and are very slow to recover from any damage. This area here off the southeastern United States was just designated a marine protected area this year. 23,000 square miles is now protected from destructive fishing methods such as bottom trawling that would destroy this fragile coral.